Hello and welcome back to The Watch Correspondent. Today we're going to be taking a look at a watch from a company called Watch Dives. Of course, when looking at this watch, you might realize where it drew its inspiration from. It really isn't shy about it. It's a pretty faithful homage to a quite popular watch. But in my books, that's okay, because at the end of the day, this watch sells new for about 2.5% of the cost of the original. But even at that price, is it worth it to buy this watch? Let's check it out. Let's start off by talking about what Watch Dives is, because of course they manufacture watches such as this one, but they're also a dealer. They sell brands such as San Martin, Kronos, Heimdaller. Of course you might notice that all of those are Chinese brands, and that is true. They sell Chinese brands on their site, and they even have some really interesting models where they have teamed up and collaborated with the likes of San Martin to create watches that frankly, look fantastic. Many of the Watch Dives watches are meant to emulate other famous watches. They are pretty faithful homages, and this one is no different, of course, being an homage to the Tudor Black Bay 36. When I do this kind of review, I like to compare a watch like this to a similarly priced watch from Seiko or Citizen, or at least what I expect that they would be able to deliver. This watch has great build quality, a nice bracelet on it, but it has a Seiko Mecha Quartz movement and a mineral crystal. And what is it coming at? $100. When you would compare this to something like a Seiko model, Seiko would charge probably $150 to $200, so that makes this look like great value, but Seiko isn't exactly known for their value nowadays. What is known for their value is the Chinese watchmaking industry. So let's compare it to something like the AD2030 from Addy's Dive. Taking a look at these watches, they have very similar clasps, very similar bracelets, similar construction, and the same movement and crystal material. This watch comes in at $60, and this watch comes in at $100. So, all in all, it lays in a kind of weird middle ground where it's better value than big brands, but not as good value as other competitors in its own segment. So, I can't score it too highly, but of course, it is better than average. Quick look at the specifications. 36 by 44 millimeters means that this wear is quite compact. If you have a large wrist, perhaps stay away. Normal stainless steel makes up the case and bracelet, and a mineral crystal adorns the case. Underneath that is Seiko Mecha Quartz VH31, of course ticking four times a second, but quartz nonetheless. 100 meters of water resistance and pretty decent loom mean that this makes up a pretty good everyday wear piece, if it fits you. Let's take a closer look at the watch itself now, starting with the case. Obviously, the first feature you're gonna see are these really strong, f completely flat sides to it, often referred to as slab sides. I think it looks great, and it brings an otherwise pretty small watch at 36 millimeters up to look pretty normal size, and it, you know, it ends up looking like a nice tool watch. Flipping the watch over, you'll see that the back is actually completely sterile and solid. Um, some people really don't like that look. I don't mind it too much. It's a screw on crease back, so it should be easy enough to change the battery out when you need to. Looking at the finishing here, almost all of it is brushed. Of course, going for that sort of tooly aesthetic, you want it to be brushed because that is much more durable. Brushed sides, brushed top of the lugs, this side brushed as well, brushed bezel. But as you can see, it's not completely brushed, is it? And you're right. There is chamfering along many of the corners. You can see it there on the lugs. You can see it there around the bezel. And the chamfering itself is polished. The lines here are very crisp. And honestly, the finishing is really well done. It's one of the best features of this watch. I think it looks great and really elevates the product. The crown here is a screw down crown, helping it receive that 100 meter water resistance statement on the front. And beyond that, there's not really much to it. And that's sort of the appeal. Of course, Something that isn't appealing though is that mineral glass crystal. I think that would have been a really solid addition to make that sapphire and make this watch a little bit, you know, irrefutable. If this had sapphire on it, I would immediately bump up the value. And of course, for a sort of Thule watch, it would make it a lot more durable as well. Underneath the crystal is the classic Tudor look, right? It has those snowflake hands and Actually, the second hand is slightly different from the original. The original has a square um, version of this lollipop second hand, this one of course being a circle. 
The hands are military specification, triangle marking 12 o'clock, squares at three, six, and nine, and circles that are the, all the other ones. So at a quick glance, it should be pretty easy to see where you are, especially because those are all filled with BGW-9 loom. The dial itself is this deep sunburst blue, and some lights, and especially in direct light, you don't even notice that it's sunburst, but as soon as you start to change that angle on it, it really becomes this deep, dark sunburst effect that personally, I think looks wonderful. The original is of course a little bit lighter than this, but that's not a bad thing by any means. I think this looks great. At six o'clock, you can see the Watch Dives logo. One of the biggest problems with smaller brands like this that are probably built in China are usually the logos and branding. Although in this case, that looks really wonderful, doesn't it? Especially with the Tudor logo being a shield, I think this Watch Dives shield logo fits quite well. One thing I don't like quite as much is that it only says 100 meters below the pinion. It sort of isn't centered also, so it looks like they were gonna write something above it, but then didn't. Uh, I don't think it looks bad, but when you look really closely at it, that printed text there looks like a little lonely, doesn't it? <laughs> of course, like I mentioned, there is BGW-9 loom. If you don't know what that means, it means that it is a very pale blue luminescent material filling in all of the hands and hour markers. Now, of course, there isn't a ton of space on the dial for loom itself, so it's not going to be the brightest in the world, but it is really great to see such nice loom being used in a watch at about $100. And to be frank, it lasts pretty long and is pretty bright. Now moving past the case of the watch and dial, let's look at the bracelet. The bracelet here is your really classic three link style and all of those are articulating. So it does fit the wrist quite well. The clasp here is what you expect. It's a milled uh, lower and a pressed upper. I will say one thing is that this clasp kind of overhangs quite a bit there, you can see. and. It's not a problem for me, but I can imagine some people having a bit of a problem with uh, the articulation because of that. Now, I thought this bracelet was quite good. It does pull hairs ever so slightly, which was a bit annoying, but for $100, I think the bracelet is one of the better ones I've seen. The Watch Dives logo is then put onto the upper of the clasp. And staying on that clasp, five holes of micro adjust, plus they gave you some extra links. I think that if you have about an eight plus inch wrist, you should be perfectly fine. I ended up taking off two links and then putting it at one of the smallest micro adjust settings. And that's my seven inch wrist. So most wrists should be more than fine wearing this watch or at least fitting it. Speaking of the fit, let's look at it on wrist. Of course, you saw earlier in the video, the dimensions and all of the specifications of this watch. And you might've seen that it has 36 millimeter diameter and thought that's too small. Worry. I think it fits more than well on my average size wrist. Of course, you are able to make your decision for yourself on that. The 44 millimeter lug to lug also means that it doesn't hang over very far, which only adds to the wearability. The slab sides give it a bit of presence and I think it's just a great everyday piece. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's part of the reason people love the Black Bay 36 and in turn, this watch that looks remarkably similar. The versatility. It's really hard to think of a environment where this doesn't work, except for maybe exercising. Of course, all that versatility isn't necessarily watch dives doing. This isn't an original design. I can show you a picture of the Tudor Black Bay 36 here. The original design, of course, has a different bracelet on it, a polished bezel, and a different seconds hand. But besides that, it's clear where the inspiration came from and they didn't try to hide that at all. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but you have to take points away for originality. There isn't really much to be seen here. So what's the verdict? On the left, you can see the watch score adding up to a total of 59 or an average of 5.9. It's hard to argue with it, isn't it? The only real categories that it lost a lot of points were originality and heritage and both of those categories don't even affect the wearing of this watch. It's just kind of the romanticism of owning it. And that's fine. That's really important to some people. But to me, how it wears and how it looks is much more important. And for that reason, I think this is a total win and I totally recommend it. In fact, a 59 is the highest score I have given out so far. I would love to see Sapphire Crystal and I would love to see an automatic movement in here. Even just the Seiko NH35 would be fine. So 
if you want that Black Bay 36 look, but only have 2.5% of the money required, this is a great option and an incredibly cheap one at that. Thanks for checking out the video and be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.